you guys. Hello guys, I'm audible visible. Hello, how are you? If I'm audible visible, let me know. A very good evening once again. So we will continue with the RRR series. Uh, we are still in the new pressure chapter, and uh, I'll be talking about uh, evasion of immune response today. I think uh, you must have got the notice in the Telegram group as well. Good evening, Lion. Today, what we're going to see is our cancer. First, uh, tell me one thing. Do you think cancer is normal or pathogenic organism? It's definitely abnormal and it's definitely pathogenic, right? The first query here is why is my immune system not stopping it? That's the first query. First, can my immune system identify cancer? That I have to sort it out because definitely my body can identify bacteria or a virus. The first question is can my body identify cancer? If yes, what all cells will help me to defend me or protect me against a tumor process? Next, if I have a, such an effective immune system, what we boast? Why are they not getting destroyed is my next question, right? Hello, Rahul. Hope you're doing good. Okay. So these are questions which you have to address. I hope your exam is over, Rahul. How was it? So let's go on to today's discussion, right? So evasion of immune response. The first question is, why should even an immune system identify, okay, a tumor is something abnormal. Why should an immune system get alerted is my first question. There are three reasons why an immune system or how an immune system can pick up cancer, right? First, expression of new antigens. I'll give an example for expression of new antigens. Okay, uh, let's take uh, amazing round. Let's take an example. Uh, we saw about in Warburg effect. We saw about a gene called as MYC gene. Can I say MYC gene will not be present in any normal cell? Yes, it will not be. Right? I won't see MYC in any normal cell. I'll see MYC only in a pathogenic cell. I won't see that in a normal cell at all. Or I can see them in a stem cell. A stem cell will have a normal MYC product or it could be a tumor cell which can have a normal MYC product because MYC takes care of the Warburg effect and Warburg effect can be in a stem cell or a tumor cell which means uh, let's assume my liver parenchyma or my kidney parenchyma will not have MYC so when I have a mutation this MYC gets expressed that's new antigen the new antigen can be as a result of mutation mutations can re-express new antigens that can be a problem because new antigens my body will think okay i don't didn't have mhc properly now it's been expressed so it is abnormal my body should defend or defeat it right second is over expression or an aberrant protein simple example uh, what mutation do you have for every proto-oncogene we read about proto-oncogene quite some days back gain of function or loss of function gain or loss you know gain of function mutation right so normally my body has let's say 10 proteins just for an example here due to the gain of function mutation i'm having 500 proteins which means definitely abnormal if you remember the first chapter what we read if there's an intracellular protein accumulation can it cause cell death if so what type of cell death they can cause apoptosis right so this overexpression of protein could be any gain of function mutation Obviously, it's going to be excessively produced, excessively stored. It can, it should trigger cell death, but it's not dying. Right? We have to know why it is not dying, right? Good evening, Kamran. Next is viruses. Will HPV cause cancer? They can. EBV? They can, right? H. pylori? Can. There are many, many bacteria and quite a few viruses which can predispose to cancer formation. So, obviously, in a HPV induced cancer, you will have lots and lots of the HPV viral particles inside the cells, body cell. So they should be considered falling, they should be killed obviously. Right? So these are the three ways by which my body can consider uh, tumor as a pathogen. If my body is considering tumor as a pathogen, next question is who can kill them? I have four cells mentioned here. These are the four cells which are capable of killing a cancer or capable of killing any of these three abnormalities. I have CD4 T cell, CD8 T cell, natural killer T cell or just natural killer cell, NK cell. And then I have granulocytes though not a primary defense mechanism little bit of uh, help granulocytes the neutrophils can definitely produce right so these are the four guys which should have protected me or anyone on the face of earth from cancer now we have to see why these cells are not protecting that's the hallmark evasion or how do immune tumors escape my immunological surveillance right first we'll take cd8 then we'll take cd4 nk cells still 
can kill cancer cells. They still can kill cancer cells. But the only concern is NK cell is an innate immune response. They're not very effective, but still to some extent they'll definitely destroy cancer cells. Granulocytes also is going to be completely taken care of, right? We'll see why. First, CD8. CD8's other name. Can anyone tell me the other name of CD8 T cells? We have one more name for CD8 T cells. What is that? We call them cyto. Toxic T cells, right? We call them cytotoxic T lymphocytes or cytotoxic T cells, right? So, what a normal CD8 does is if there is an abnormal MHC1 signaling, MHC1 will be abnormally signal if there is anything which is inside the cell problem, right? Uh, was there, uh, was it malignant or benign, uh, Rahul? The answer will be based on that. Okay. If it's malignant dysgeminoma, teratoma is a benign tumor. Right? So when you have an abnormal MHC1 signal, so the CD8 T cell will cause cytotoxicity. Or it will definitely kill the cell which gives the abnormal MHC1. Right? So any intracellular problem, there'll be an abnormal MHC1 signal that will tell to my CD cell, H cell, see this is an abnormal cell, abnormality happening, my cytotoxic T cells will come and destroy them. Right? So what cancers do is, tumor cells are very smart. So what tumor cells do is, tumor cells lose its MHC1. By losing its MHC1, a tumor cell will not be will not be able to destroy them at all, right? So when the MHC1 is lost, CD8 can't even identify tumor cells. They can't even identify tumor cells. Again, Rahul, if the question is just, just a germ cell tumor, I will prefer uh, teratoma as an option. If the question was specific on malignant germ cell tumor, it will be dysgeminoma, right? Okay, so since tumor cells lose the MHC1, my body cannot identify them at all. My CD8 cannot identify them at all. So one arm of whatever can protect me is taken care of just by losing MHC1. How do they lose them? Only tumor cells can answer. Maybe they learn from the damage and they slowly lose the MHC1 molecule, right? Now let's see how CD4 has been escaped because CD4 is one of the most important protective phenomenon for most of the pathogen what we get exposed, right? So let's assume again, we'll have to know how a normal CD4 functions, right? Let's assume we have a cell called as an antigen presenting cell which has your MHC2 molecule and I have a CD4 cell, right? Just normal CD4. This MHC2 molecule normally presents an antigen. Apart from this, I have two more signals called as co-stimulatory molecules. So there are two co-stimulatory molecules, one coming from my antigen presenting cell which is my CD80 bar CD86 one coming from a CD4 side, which is your CD28. So this binds and this gives second signal. So for a normal CD4 to act, I need two signals, right? So one signal coming from your uh, CD4 binding to your MHC2, the T cell receptor binding. Second sig signal is from the co-stimulatory molecules. Okay? These both are absolutely must. Only when both the signals are present, CD4 can act. Okay. So only when both the signals are present, CD4 can act. Again, this is completely normal. This is how a normal CD4 acts in our body. Now let's see what will tumor cells do or when an antigen presenting cell presents a tumor antigen, how will they modify the CD4 response what we're going to see, right? Let's assume a person has some XYZ tumor. Any tumor will have its own antigen, right? Obviously there'll be an antigen. So this antigen is taken by antigen presenting cell processes them okay so this antigen presenting cell once it process the mhc2 molecule to your same i'm writing t antigen for tumor antigen to your cd4 now whenever a cd4 binds to a tumor antigen the tumor antigen is able to make a change so what they do is this will stimulate we still don't know how it stimulates the CD4 to secrete two molecules. Can anyone mention? If you have listened to the essentials batch, I'm sure you know the answer. It will secrete CTLA4 and PD1. So this CTLA4 and PD1 will indirectly come and destroy my second signal. So like I said, 
I need both the signals, right? They will destroy signal two. They will not. They'll make sure the co-stimulatory molecules don't function. And this guy is produced by T lip phosphate only. And the tumor cells, tumor antigen somehow conveys them. Okay, these are going to be get destroyed, right? So once this is destroyed, because of this CTLA for BD1, there is no second signal. Do you think uh, T cell can get activated? Uh, Tam Horsfall protein is a normal protein seen in the tubules, renal tubules. You must have read that in way back in the physiology as well. Okay. So when the second signal is not there, what will happen is this will make sure CD4 is CD4 will not be activated. Okay. Okay. CD4 will not be activated when I don't have the second signal. That's very very important, right? Perfect. So this is how a tumor cell is going to escape from CD4's response. And this we knew from maybe somewhere around 2000s. That's when we understood that, okay, this is how the immune system or the T cells is able to take care of my immune pathogenesis, right? That's very tricky. It's an amazing plot made by the tumor cells to escape immunity. So what we saw was, and uh, tell me if I'm right. Am I right in saying that this is the guy? These proteins are the one which escapes or makes the tumor cell escape immune mechanism or CD4. Yes, these two proteins are the one which makes my immune system weak or helps the tumor cells. So what we did was we said let's destroy the protein treatment. R access for treatment, right? PCT, right? So R access the treatment. So what happens is so we had antibodies to CTLA4, we had antibodies to PD1. So we had antibodies to these proteins and we gave them to the uh, patients. This uh, anti CTLA4 is not used anymore. Why? Sure, Sapa. We call them ipilimumab. Okay. This is not present, it's not there at all. Right? We, uh, it's kind of been discarded, but anti PD1 is very, very efficient. We have a drug called this nivolumab. Okay. So ipilimumab and nivolumab. So nivolumab is an ipilimumab. These were dubbed as immunotherapy. So when a patient gets either ipilimumab or nivolumab, what happens is this is going to tell to my T cell. See, tumor cells are not foreign, are not self antigens. They are foreign antigens. Go and destroy. So when any patient gets any of these drugs, the CD4 will go and destroy tumor cells. This was called as an immunotherapy. I'm not giving a drug to destroy the cancer. I'm giving a drug so that I can correct my immune system so that my immune system can destroy cancer, right? That's why it's called as an immunotherapy. We have one big side effect of immunotherapy uh, that I am sure you must know because this is the same mechanism by which I prevent autoimmune reactions. So what happens is there will be lots of autoimmune reactions will be there in the patients, AI for autoimmune reactions. And one of the important side effect is there's been increasingly reported after uh, nivolumab and ka mediated vasculitis. Anti-aging, yes, uh, that's an uh, incidental side effect what we saw. We are not sure why it causes them. And uh, it's not very consistent. So it yes, it did cause reversal of graying affair and everything, the drug nivolumab, right? But these two are consistent all across any drug. Like we have congeners called as pembrolizumab. All are anti PD1 or anti PD1 L1 analogs that is very very efficient these days. ANCA mediated vasculitis, ANCA stands for your anti neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies. We'll read them when we come to vasculitis, right? So, this is how an immune system, uh, your uh, CD4 will be uh, uh, my tumor will escape CD4 and we had a mechanism to counteract them and we created a new therapy called as an immunotherapy, right? Like I said, NK cells will not be taken care of, NK cells still can destroy tumor, but what happens is third arm here. A tumor will invade. Invasion is the hallmark of any cancer, right? Invasion of the base membrane is a hallmark of any cancer. Whenever a tumor invades, what happens here is this will create a wound healing mechanism. Whenever an wound healing mechanism happens, obviously I'll have few macrophages. If you remember our second chapter of pathology, we call them an M2 activated macrophages. So this M2 activated macrophages has two things. One, they produced TGF beta. 
This helps in the scar formation because for wound healing, we need scar formation for sure. The same M2 activated macrophages will produce interleukin 10 and interleukin 10 will be anti-inflammatory because I am understanding it's an wound, wound has to be healed. So this anti-inflammatory cytokine will reduce your neutrophils. So whenever a tumor invades, obviously it will produce an anti-inflammatory cytokine which in turn will reduce the neutrophils. So neutrophils also cannot destroy a cancer, right? Okay, so these are a few things how a tumor can escape an immune response. It's a very short session for me. Uh, I'm going to call it a day today. So if there's any doubts, do let me know. I'll just quick recap. Uh, this can come as a short answer for you. Immunological surveillance evasion or evasion of an immune response. First, right, why should a tumor consider pathogen? New antigen formation, overexpression of proteins or a viral or bacterial proteins. So once it is there, these are the mechanisms by which I can destroy cancer. CD4, CD8, NK and your granulocytes. NK cells still can destroy cancer. But CD8, the best way to escape CD8 mechanism is lose MHC1. Because CD8's main signal is MHC1 and once MHC1 is lost, a T cell can, a CD8 cannot identify cancer. CD4 for normal functioning, I need this co-stimulatory molecules. And when a tumor has been presented to my CD4, CD4 is being told to produce CTLA4 and PD1 that goes and binds to the co-stimulatory molecules or the second signal. Once there is no second signal, CD4 will not be activated. This is how a tumor escapes a CD4 response. And we knew that and we said that let's produce proteins which is going to destroy the CTLA4 and PD1. So we created a new category of therapy called as an immunotherapy. So what we do here is I give the drug. Drug tells my T lymphocytes, see these are cancer cells, pathogens go and kill and the T cells kill them. Then bit of less side effect compared to a conventional chemotherapy but one of the biggest side effects is autoimmune reactions and combined vasculitis is also an autoimmune reaction, right? Whenever tumor invades, right? So that's going to destroy the uh, wound, heal, cause wound healing. Wound healing will have M2 activated macrophages. Interleukin 10 will be there, it will be anti-inflammatory and TG beta will help in the wound healing process, right? So that's all about the quick revision of immunotherapy. See you in the next class. See you tomorrow. And if you are an essentials bachelor, see you there uh, by 7 o'clock. Bye-bye. Thank you.